there's an actual vomit center. Your body has a vomit center. So the neurons inside of your gut communicate through your vagal nerve and it comes to a center in your brain to projectile vomit. And it might do that for three or four or five days. Uh oh. And that's actually what happened. That's, you had to. Dude, I was hurting bad. Good. Do not do the cow challenge. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Masters of Sport podcast here with two-time world champion Earl Kunkel. Soon to be three. How many words did you write? Um, I'm like around 10,000 a week now at this point, which isn't a lot, but I don't know. It's more than you can do. You illiterates. <laughs> Wait, is that... Were you just going to start attacking me? You were just going to... Yeah, I know. Well, you I was... illiterate, stupid. <laughs> I think I was going to call you a literate. SOB, which is like a line I always hear from, uh, I feel like it was Jay-Z who would say it or something like that, in like the takeover or something <laughs> yeah. like that. Even if it wasn't, that's how I was saying it in my head. And you were, in, but then you re- you resisted, you like you held yourself? Yeah. And you kept yourself together. I put a limiter on me, I governed what came out of my oh, mouth, okay. so I didn't, I didn't go for it all and max out <laughs> with just, how offensive held, I could be. You held back a little bit. Yeah. Why did you feel like I was attacking you? You, you have been you since I got here. Uh, uh, I don't know if I was triggered. So at it's all. nice that you finally actually did some work. Um, granted, I do like this on the side. <laughs> I do have like a full time job. <laughs> yeah, Dade's like, hey, you didn't do enough work. Story of every person who works here. <laughs> Story of every person who works out here. <laughs> yeah. <that's- laughs> <laughs> oh me yeah <laughs> anyway how is that possible it Dane. absolutely should be well we could talk how much <laughs> yeah, that would cost <laughs> earl's like shit at some point i maybe. will kill you hey are you coming friday to the party no i'm going to my other work party oh you're lame how much were tickets for this one 25 Oh, it was two dollars cheaper than the other one i went to yeah thanks a lot yeah but the uber ride would have probably been way more oh, yeah that's for sure yeah all right, so Why, are Earl's, you going so, Friday? Yeah. Huh? Are you going to the your Friday? Yes, of course I'm going. Oh, to my I wasn't party sure. Friday. I don't know. Okay, so Earl's here. He is the co-author of the year two times, and yeah. Now he's working on the third go. Hold yeah, on, I got now it. he's working on the third go, playing with uh, Shin Godzilla. Yeah, tell us about Shin Godzilla. No, I'm not telling this story. Watch the movie, Dane. <laughs> Go ahead and culture yourself. I think the dude from who did Neon Evangelion directed this. Yeah, and I think he also did the Attack on Titan film too. I, I, I may be wrong on that. I'm not like too nerdy in like all the coolness that everyone else is. But Shin Godzilla is pretty cool because he like starts out as like this little baby, comes out, keeps mutating. And he just keeps mutating. The best scene in that movie, though, the best scene. It's not a series. No, it's a film. It is uh, other than when he goes like he shoots all the lasers out of his body, which is pretty cool from a spectacle standpoint. But there's this one scene where the government—they're all meeting, and they stop the meeting to go have another meeting, and it's all the same people. And then they stop that meeting to go back to the other meeting. And it's just like, it's a great, it's so clever of a way to just say like, look how inefficient government can be in acting when you need to make a choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, It's just, it's clever. Like it's good filmmaking. Yeah. And it's real subtle. Like it's just like, if you're paying attention, you, you just start laughing and you're like, wow, this good satire right there. Yeah. Like anyway, um, what are we talking about today? Um, impulse training day. We're not. We're going to be talking about impulse, which is your thing of force over time and like power output type of stuff with that. But the actual impulse training day. Um, but before we do that, remember to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. That's and right. And if you haven't done that already, what are you waiting for? And if you're listening on a podcast, hey, not one, two, three, but five stars, and do it like every time you log in if you can too. We'd really appreciate. We would that. love it. Yeah. So whatever you listen on, I don't know what p- do people listen to podcasts on. I dude, surprisingly, I feel like I'm an old person for doing this, but I actually listen on Apple Podcasts. Apple Podcasts and right. Spotify. Some people and Spotify yeah. too. Isn't Spotify like tanking right now? I don't know. Like, isn't their stock just plummeting? 
Or maybe that was a few months ago, and I just I, dude, I, I don't know. pay attention to anything like that. Yeah, how are you gonna ever be rich, Dane? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I have like plans, you get. but I, but I, I don't know how. Everyone, so you know, Dane was coming at me so hard before we started recording. <laughs> now that we're like recording, and he's at a loss for words. He's like, "Oh, that's why he wasn't saying anything. He's just gonna come I at wanted, me." You know what? I I did want to. This is totally out of not me coming back at you. Uh -oh. I wanted to show you my uh, my garage strength uh, weightlifting rules. Oh, but, yeah, yeah. That you made for yourself? Yeah. Well, for the team. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, you want me to, you want my eyes on it to give you feedback is what I'm hearing. Yeah. All right. What's my consulting fee? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> jokes, jokes. All right, let's talk about impulse training. Um first, I think we need a little um introduction. So, if you don't know, Garage Strength uses parabolic periodization is the way they program. Like that's their periodization model and it's basically it was created by Dane a lot of decade plus of using it on athletes and not just any athletes. We're talking Olympic level athletes, world championship athletes, like just took third at, in the clean and jerk at worlds type of athletes, yeah. D one athletes, NFL athletes, like mm -hmm. people have been developed and we're not talking like he came here already at that level, though. There are some people like that. We're talking people who came at like 12 years old, yeah, 10 years old, 18 years old and got developed into that as well too. So it works over a broad spectrum of ages and you know, we know it works based off the athletes that use it and have gone through the system. Um, so parabolic periodization, which has like this mindset we could say in weightlifting, like started basically from technical coordination movements, yep. but has been used for sports performance. And in the sports performance model, in, in the model in general, there's a leg power day mm -hmm. that's tech usually day one. There's an upper body strength day, which is day two. There's an athlete day, which is like your day three. And then your day four, which is another leg day, but it's labeled the impulse day. Yeah. And then there's the upper body day, which we'll talk about at some other time too. I think I think too, if you know, sometimes we'll have athletes that might only train four days a week. So if they train four days a week, we sort of combine day five and day four into like a a, a total body impulse day. But if they're training five days a week, it's it's a true full blown you know, impulse leg based day. And I think like what we've seen is the, the best, the best thing that's come out of it is, you know, one, like you have mentioned where it's like impulse is basically force over a period of time. And so typically that, that period of time in sports performance yeah, it's is small. going to be very short. Yeah. And so if you're running, if you're sprinting, every time that you ground every time that you put your foot down you have a very very short period of time if you're playing football that's blast impulse yes yeah if you're playing football and you're coming off the line it's going to be the same thing blast impulse off the line making contact might be more, more of a sustained sus yeah yeah so <clears throat> yeah, yeah <All> exactly right. <laughs> so the the main goal is then if we're doing you know if we set this up and I like to set it up where the, you know, you do, you go through a warm up and you do, you know, PVC pipe walks, you do some overhead squats, you do some side band walks, whatever, split squats, stuff like that to really loosen up, get, get your heart rate up, get your body temperature up a little bit. And then all of a sudden, you know, you start to feel pretty good. So the first thing that we end up doing is, you know, let's say like a hang clean or a two box clean or a, yeah, it's a technical snatch. coordination yeah. movement. Um, and it would be 70 to 80% as fast as possible like ripping the shit out of it yeah i guess like it's a dynamic effort as people like to say type yeah. of you know which yeah. is how i want to say it years of branding as yeah. people might think of it right which right. could be more familiar um i have a question for you from a technical coordination movement like usually there's the th big three right snatch clean Jerk. And the jerk. Yeah. But the jerk's usually used in sports performance on the upper body day. Yeah. Um, so that leaves you with, like, the clean and the snatch. I think, and you can tell me I'm totally wrong, that the clean is more the leg power day and the snatch is better for the impulse day. Yeah, that's a really, that's, yes. Oh, man, I wanted you to tell me I was wrong. No, I, I, I think, I'm now, the only thing I would argue from a generic perspective, you're 100% accurate. Okay. That's like, I think that's a great way for people to think about it. So, um, now 
one of the things is, and this would be a good example with, it's it's interesting you bring this up because Eric Favors, who throws, he's a shot put record holder for Ireland. He trains here. And <clears throat> we've been doing his heavy snatches on day one on the power day. Okay. But only because he had said to me he wanted to snatch over 160 and he wanted to try and front squat 210 for like a set of five. So with that being said, our main goal was to get him to snatch over 160, which he just snatched 165. And oh, he, he set did, the gym record then. Yeah, he set the gym <laughs> record. And then get him to push his front squat pretty heavy because he wants he wants to eventually clean like 210. And so kilos. And so now he just got a new program. His new program, now we've switched back to he's doing one box cleans and then a back squat on, on power day and then on impulse day. He's going strictly into uh, two box snatch because that's where his money is. That's where he can move 140, 140 kilos at you know 1.7 to two meters per second. And you're talking like the velocity stuff yeah. that like Taman is kind of in yeah. charge of. Yeah, and like the gym. ripping that as quickly as he can in a very short time frame. And and the the main carryover, especially for somebody like a shot putter, and this would be similar to a football player, and even you know I've seen this even with swimmers too as well coming off the blocks is that being able to execute something extremely very very explosively with technique is challenging but if you can train that in the gym then you're going to see that good carry over to you know using the swimming model you're going to train you're going to train that very explosive blast impulse coming off the block but you have to have good technique as well and so you can sort of see that carry over from what he's doing you know you know or what we would be doing on that impulse 1a technical coordination period carry over to that high speed impulse expression that that you'll end up seeing in sports performance. So if we move, I guess, farther away from the generic clean on a Monday or clean on leg power day, snatch on the impulse day from mm -hmm. a technical coordination movement for the legs, could we then say, all right, variation wise, we'll use powers on the impulse day or am I going? Yeah, no, no, no. That's great. All right. Yeah, that I would say powers, high hang. This powers. is why I'm two time uh, world yeah, champion, exactly. co-author. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think uh, high hangs. I think high hang powers, um, and I, I think you're mapping it out very clearly so that someone who's not here all the time, yeah, could start to piece that together. Where oh, okay, now we now we see. And the thing is, is too, is that then you can also say. You know, if we do a, a heavy clean on on power day and then a, a back squat, now you can see that sort of piece together. Whereas on the snatch day, you might do a fast snatch, a power variation, basically. And then you might do like a, an unbroken single leg squat as that strength okay. movement. So that's where it's like the, the unilateral or even a step up or something that's lighter, faster. And, and you're doing it unbroken where it's just boom, 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 boom. You're hitting good uh, elastic positions, and you have to control the speed, but you're moving things quickly. So now you're now it's like figuring out how that those puzzle pieces really just can be pulled in and out, and then the variations or the the powers or the the squat, you know, the squat variations can change based on the season and based on the sport that the individual is training for. Yeah, and you talked to about Eric, um, how there was a goal in mind. So you, you did a little switch there. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to assume that had something to do with out of season too, why yeah. that was allowed and yeah. like how it was, but also too, you started talking about mental aspects and how an athlete responds to certain movements, like what they crush, if you will. Yeah. So they like feel invincible. And I think that gets into like what parabolic periodization calls as the athlete reactive analysis yes. the yep. curve yeah yeah and just how they respond to that so do you want to talk to a little bit more about that and like choosing a technical coordination movement i i would say something along those lines it would be if if i have someone peaking there there's a substantial i mean there's a substantial body of evidence that that if someone is doing something that they are good at so summon and realization phase in yeah right yeah now. yeah so and even to a point the ascension phase. okay you, if we can put in a, a lift, if we can get an athlete to do a variation that they're good at and they feel the pressure of a competition coming up, you know, they're four, six, eight weeks out. They feel that that pressure coming on, that the meet's coming. 
but they're let's just say theoretically or hypothetically they're doing a lift that they're not good at well now they're missing lifts so they're just not lifting as heavy yeah and and you know use i'll use an example with Haley. if she's doing like a high hang snatch and she's only hitting you know this is a or or let's say with her a pause below the knee snatch and she's hitting like 75 kilos that's a weak one for her right yeah yeah it's a weak lift and and she's got a meet in six weeks where she's got to hit 88 kilos she's in her mind even if it even if it's not conscious it's still in there and and it can still have a toll on her that's why you give her the two block snatch yeah, exactly <laughs> and then she can go really big or a high hang snatch and she can get really really heavy or we might do that high hang snatch in ascension phase which helps her hit a really big two box on the on the summit phase got you <clears throat> and so that's where especially with sports performance it goes even further because these are these are athletes where lifting isn't their sport right you know they're they're in this as a supplement so if I can get someone to feel like on a the big thing that I always like to say to to the football guys or to wrestlers is like, look, when you're doing like these powers, like a power snatch, I want you to feel like when you're doing a power snatch, like you could grab the handle of a door and rip that door open and like like literally rip it off the hinge. And I you, like I want you to think about what that feels like when you when you're actually lifting, because then when you get into a, a comp. If you're a wrestler, you're throwing heavy collar ties. Your hands are heavy, and you have that impulse then when you're doing that. Do you, do you, have you trained a world bronze medalist in wrestling? Yeah, two-time. And I've also trained Isef Amida, who is the a two-time African uh, African champ in freestyle wrestling, oh, I, I along just, with Nick Wazowski, I was just going world champion, more medalist. reason why parabolic periodization for sports performance you know, when you worth were, your time in reading. I did want to brag about this also that uh, Nicholas just got the uh, freshman All American for football. Oh, wait. When did he start? He was eight? Ten? <laughs> Ten, yeah. Ten. yeah. It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Carry on. <laughs> so I, I think, like, <laughs> I don't know if that was a humble brag or not. Yeah. But. I, I think that and this is a good example, actually. Is like one of Nick's last training sessions. Um, I want to say it was last. Easter or something I think he came home uh bef you know before they had their spring game and it's like we were doing some just playing around with them basically like super fast cleans and whatnot and and the cool thing is is it's the same thing with him it's like yo if we can get him to feel that that emotional connection with logic like move this as tight as you can as fast as you can as purposeful as you can but it's heavyweight. You got to catch it and you got to, you know, catch it in the hole and get out of there as quickly as possible. Then that starts to carry over to how they execute things, how they see things in in their sport with more logic because they're associating um, concise movement with logical thought instead of this like crazy emotional thought. So I have this odd theory since you're talking. I, I hear you talking about perception right now. Like the way you see the world, yeah. if you will. So yeah, like yeah, yeah. Yep. if you're making lifts, you see it as if you can do more than maybe what you actually can. Yeah. Which in itself will help you do more than you actually can, right? Yes. Um and you're talking about an athlete who runs what, a four two forty? Yeah, four like well, he ran a four three six. He's the he's the second fastest uh running back ever at Penn State behind uh Saquon Barkley. All right. And but and if we talk about people that speed, which yeah. is essentially like an uh, expression of strength of impulse though yeah like right yeah blast yeah, impulse blast yeah, impulse yeah he's expressing that strength that way through the speed yeah but when you're that fast everything else looks slower yeah right and like I i'm not that fast you're not that fast no. so we don't perceive the world that way so what happens and this is but my he theory does, so then he everything does slows down everything slows down so yeah. an impulse when it's developed to that level they like, live in slow motion yeah yeah everything else is like you said in That's slow the motion. Whole thing that so your perception that connection is faster and yeah. it's easier to play. They can't. They can't. <sighs> like people, people like you and I. Like okay, so don't, yes, don't gas me up too much. No, buddy. But, but yes, <laughs> we we see this, but stereotypically or in general, you and I on a podcast we couldn't make this connection. Like, dude, the reason why Nick Chubb is one of the best is the best running back I think in the league right now is because. These guys live in slow mo. Yeah, they see things open before it happens, and they know that they can hit these holes because of their speed. And that—that's the whole thing that 
take uh you know taking eric as a shot putter or taking gwiz as, as a wrestler like they when when these guys are at the peak of their game they slow things down and they because they innate it in, their speed and their power and the, you know their impulse expression their has impulsivity yeah their impulsivity <laughs> has has the ability to they have that ability to give them more time to make decisions so then they feel less less uh, time crunch less time pressure yeah so that's the whole point here is that like and, and, it, and it even comes to dude this is a really good segue or or not segue but just you know this weekend when Haley hit that 110 to, to get third at worlds it felt like she like dude i i was sitting there and i'm like looking at it sort of like almost my right eye closed looking at it with my left eye just barely open it felt like she pulled on that thing for a week like she just <laughs> kept pulling and pulling and pulling and the thing is is that going back to the impulse is that she you know the time was probably the same but it because she knows how to apply that force in that time more effectively yeah. she used it as a, through a longer path and made the lift and it's like that's the whole thing is that as coaches we have to embrace what that means, you know, what that time frame is for each specific sport. And then we have to train them so that we can get kids to live in slow motion. Because when you live in slow motion, everything's easier. Yeah. Everything's you're not you're not like uh, you're not living uh, you're flying. by what is it? Flying by the seat of your pants. Yeah. The, yeah by the Something seat, like yeah. that. You, I don't know. You, it's, it's, yeah. It's a weird saying, but it's like in, instead you're actually making these calculated decisions that are much easier because you're ahead of the game. Yeah. And it almost looks um, reflexive, which we'll get yes. to, but yes. we're not there yet. Cause yeah. we we're just getting to absolute strength now. <laughs> okay. So, so that's the whole thing that then, then you would get into, you know, you, you prime the nervous This is when you use contrast methods then, yeah, too on yes, the impulse day versus well, the yes, power day. For sure. You know, you go into like a single leg squat and then you would do contrast methods with that single leg squat and you can do, you know, fast front squats or zombie squats and do jumps yeah. and stuff. And then after that, I would get into either a plyometric or a reflexive movement. Yeah. And the reflexive movement's purpose, we've done a bunch of episodes on that. Dude, one other thing I wanted to tell you. Uh-oh. Um, we are making for it now. Yeah, well, we're, we're making a video. Well, we we're, we edited a video that Jason sent me today. By we, you mean Jason. Yeah. Jay, well, actually, Randy did this one. Oh, wow. Um, it was on athletic muscle and it's a video and I sent this to Jan because I was talking with him when I was watching it. I thought he retired. But he he's coaching he was coaching at he's at Virginia Tech and they actually okay. asked him if he has any interest in doing strength 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 training work and he was like, No, oh, I don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> um but he had said he we're just talking, right? And and he's in the video where he's he's on like a twenty inch box. He jumps to the left, lands on his left leg, cuts, cut like Single leg, yeah. Over the lands left hurdle. leg, jumps over mini hurdle, ju jumps over mini hurdle, lands double leg, jumps onto a box. And this was the reason why I brought this up is because I was watching the video and I'm like, should this be defined as a plyometric or as a reflexive movement? Because it's it's, plyometric, yeah. Okay, so that answers the question. Yeah, but at the same time, because of that initial cut, yeah, it's too long. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. The reflexive movements are almost always it's within like, a boom, blast boom, boom. impulse yeah, type yeah. of range yeah that's true okay oh wow i just came up with that but, but i will say thank this. you for getting me there the <laughs> the movement i had i haven't used in probably like probably a year and i was looking at it, i'm like man that's a real it's like this weird series that i i was making all these weird series with him for linebacker drills and i'm like yeah this is a really really good series of plyometrics i've, I've got to you got to name it I've got. I already have a Jan jump series. Two, Redux. <laughs> yeah, redo like a um, uh, reloaded hot shot. Yeah, right. revolution. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but Welcome yeah, I, I, I to you know going back to that oh, that sorry. impulse day was that uh, that's where I want to see you know. So if I'm looking at reflexive or a plyometric, you know, exercise on that three A three B it really comes back to what's the athlete lacking and and are they lacking that that real real forceful twitchiness which to me would then need the plyometric work or are they lacking uh 
a, an ability to implement technical precision. So like, you know, someone like actually using a, a football player, someone, you know, somebody like a running back, if they have a counter or something, they have to be patient and they cut to the right and then they come back maybe and, and cut to the left to get to another hole. That's where someone could, I would use more of a reflexive exercise if they, if they struggle to have patience to hit that. So like a zone type yes, blocking yes, scheme. Yes, yes, exactly. More where you have to wait for everyone to get swept down to go yeah. and hope that safety or – Yeah, exactly. And that's where close. Th that's where an example here would be running backs are going to be successful with plyometrics. They're going to be the guys that can go into a plyometric series and execute it like all the time. But they do tend to struggle and they will have hiccups when they're doing reflexive base work because yeah. sometimes they're just too forceful. They they don't let it flow as well as it could. I love seeing young kids try reflexive work. Yeah, they're all it, over. It's hilarious. Yeah. There's a reason why it's reserved for well-trained athletes. Yeah. Cuz then they Dude, even when Yaime first came here, it was like some of the stuff that we were doing with the with the banded reflexive work. It's like this is a world champion, and and she was even struggling with some of the simple like half turn banded work, and now we're finally getting to the point where in a training session like today, you know she had like ten throws where her technique was like where I wanted it to be, and then I believe it's because she's finally figuring out how these reflexive movements okay. transfer to the throw. All right, let's go to the audience questions. All right, let's go. I think we did a decent <clears throat> job there. Yeah, that, I think that was good. I think it, I think the especially with the the clean and the snatch and the jerks all yeah. the technical coordination was yeah chef's kiss maybe, yeah maybe we can serve some soup ne beforehand next time <laughs> golden broth no okay hey, you didn't jason have any disapproved. dick and fart jokes for jason i just made week. one with the golden broth oh, okay, okay. i i was yep. thinking about talking before i i heard that over your head there buddy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> your bald head dude you want to know what's crazy no. When when you actually said golden broth, I was just listening to um, microbiome lectures, microbiota lectures, and fecal transplant lectures. Oh. Wait, is that like a, a human centipede type thing? A yeah, fecal transplant. It's real, and literally talking about <laughs> golden soup. Oh, okay. And that this dude, this shit's real, and it actually works. <laughs> was that pun intended? <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay now we'll sorry, go to the audience sorry. audience questions all right um hillshire farm 14 from discord hey join our discord our youtube community and subreddits too everybody yeah that would be a good idea on your part more info larger co i don't maybe not larger community but a more like tight knit tight knit yeah. community and i will say jason and i have even been saying now not on masters of sport as much but on the gs um on the garage strength like YouTube videos, we're getting really good comments lately. Y'all are smart. Great Keep, job, Jason. Good job, Jason. All right, Discord. Great job, fans. Yeah, Hillshire Farm fourteen. Is raw milk that much superior to low pasteurized milk that it's worth the risk of a tuberculous tuberculosis infection? I, I don't think tuberculosis is one of the main risks. The idea of raw, not processed at all natural milk is appealing to me, but I would feel terrible if my family got sick. I've never gotten sick. I, I from think it, that but yeah, that's, that's me. one thing. I've been drinking it since two thousand and one, and I've never gotten sick. And yeah. that doesn't even count like times I go to my grandparents' farm and they would have it. And I was even a vegetarian drinking raw milk, which is like you hang out with the vegans, they were not happy about that for me, <laughs> like when I would bring that up but in conversation. I also don't think that tuberculosis is one of the infections you would get. I don't know. It's, no, I, I think the infection's more like it's probably because the earth is flat. I don't know. I did the gallon yeah. challenge. Oh yeah, that, that's like and, that's and, not sick. That's and actually, just, we should have brought this it. up when I went to Mark's when we did the video with Mark, which is coming out after it'll be out. Around when, the, around the time. Yeah, um, uh, Mark, Mark, when I had texted him, he's like, "Well, what did you do?" I, I was like, "I drank a gallon of raw milk in under an hour." He was like, "This is what's happening." You <laughs> you drink so much when you eat so much of you're something, giving away the info. Okay, well, you your body literally tries to reject it. It's it's there's an actual vomit center. Your body has a vomit center, so the neurons inside of your gut communicate through your vagal nerve, and it comes to a center in your brain to projectile vomit, and it might do that for three or four or five days. Uh oh, and that's actually what happened. That's you had to. 
Dude, I was hurting bad. Good. Do not do the cow challenge, dude. Yeah. No dice. All right. Is this Anus Hassane? I don't know if I said that right. Anas <laughs> Hassane? The funny thing YouTube is, is like, I can't it pronounce could be words. that, but you're also just so bad at announcing, yeah. or pronu- enunciating words. That's part of my charm, though, too. Yeah. Yeah. Especially like, hey, here's this guy that's like helping on a podcast, can't read. <laughs> he can write, write in books. He I can, can write 10,000 words a week, yeah. though. I can read. Only I read when, a lot. Only I, when he has to have his hand held. Did I ever tell you? <laughs> no, not even close. <laughs> have I ever told you that I learned, I think it's... uh academics in korea and this may not be true i just heard someone say this or when they start reading like for their phds and they're like doing like foreign research they're not taught to learn how to actually pronounce the words just to read it so it makes sense to them and they understand what it is Uh, so i i think that idea has just resonated with me it's like who cares what it sounds like i know what it means now in in this context it can sound what it whatever it sounds like to you potato potato i can just make things up tomato there you go banana instead of banana (laughs) (laughs) awesome all right I'm a male basketball player with a bounce of an elephant. Ooh. Is there any exercise to increase my vertical? <laughs> yeah, if okay, so keep it simple, Dane. Usually, I will say first. The first thing I would do is, what is your back squat, and and do you have a bounce, dude? If you don't have a bounce, meaning when you back squat and you go ass to grass, if you don't have a stretch a stretch shortening cycle, like you get down there and you sort of sink because there's some people that don't go boom, boom. You know, they don't have that little bounce. The first step is to get a bounce in the squat. Then the next thing, increase your strength in that position. Then go into, you know, a high hang snatch. Then get into plyometric work. Oh, nice. That was a good answer. That's a phase. I wanted to bring this up. Did you do a video on that yet? Those exact three points? We should, yeah. Oh, you're welcome, Jason. I'm glad I'm doing your job for you now, too. (laughs) Dude, I wish you ran your mouth like this all the time. Um, sorry. <laughs> I am really good at this. I just I try to be humble more often. Um, what as of, I say, I'm really good at this. One of the savage <laughs> swimmers I have struggled with this quite a bit. And dude, one of the the I couldn't get her to figure out how to get a, a bounce in the squat. Uh huh. So I had her start doing pistol squats to a band. To get her to learn, like how to get out of the bottom. Did it work? Yes, dude. You're she so just, creative. She just won the uh, Michigan State title. In you the should 50. be a painter. No, I should not be a painter. Have you ever seen? No, that? no, I was kidding. Don't answer that. <laughs> Is that all the audience questions? No, that was just me. <laughs> You're so gullible. All right. Remember to um, download the Peak Strength app if you haven't already. Absolutely. Seven free Seven days to free start days. out. And then you get access to the essentially worst thing the you AI version of Dane. Is not do anything. That's pretty good, right? Yeah. <laughs> you and uh, Alan Watts. 100 Alan Watts. Or wait, does that work? Yeah. An Alan, an Alan wattage of information right to your dome. <laughs> That's true. An electric feed. Synapse yeah. is firing. Um, so download Peak Strength app at whatever app store you use, mobile device, or mobile look at app. device, peakstrength.app. Um, what else do you need to do? Get some strength equipment for your home gym yep. or the gym you work at, especially those single leg rollers. I think pre-orders are back up yep. maybe this may, where they're at. Um, get that foam pad. Get a technique stick. Foam balance pad. What else? The power elastic bands for all your traveling needs and at-home warm-ups. And if you just want to be dynamic with reflexive work, go for it too. Absolutely. So you can get that impulse day. I there think that's. Go. I think I sold everything. Hopefully yeah, you, you did a great job, bought. Earl. Awesome. Thanks. Your compliments mean nothing to me. They're so empty. <laughs> Until next time, peace. Bye.